Welcome back to the mitosis playlist. In this video, we're going to talk about the actual process of mitosis and all the steps that are in it. If you go back to the past few videos, uh, we basically talked about the processes leading up to it. We talked about G1 phase, S phase, G2 phase, and the regulation of how you actually get into mitosis. So this video is going to be dedicated purely to mitosis. That's all we're going to be looking at. Okay, so before we really get into it, I want to think about if we if we have uh, if we have a cell, let's say we have a cell, think about some of the features that might exist in the cell. Well, if we're not undergoing mitosis, we're going to have a nucleus, right? And in the nucleus, we're going to have the nucleolus, that really dense part of the nucleus where ribosomal RNA is made, right? And also in the nucleus, we're going to have DNA molecules. Now, if you were looking at a DNA molecule, of course, it would be double-stranded. But essentially, when you look at it, it was it would essentially it would essentially just be kind of a scraggly looking kind of it appears to be disorganized strand of DNA so let me redraw that it kind of erased okay this this arrangement of DNA this is called chromatin and like I mentioned in the last video it sort of appears disorganized and very entropic but it's actually very organized very ordered and it's highly regulated okay so you have the chromatin in there now, what would essentially happen is if we kind of blow up the chromatin and so forth, like let's say that's one DNA molecule. Let's say that's one, one DNA molecule. If I were to take that DNA molecule and I were to condense it, let's say I were to condense that DNA molecule, what I would essentially get is something that looked like this, maybe thicken it a little bit. You would get this type of molecule right here. Okay, so if I take one DNA molecule and I condense it, I'm going to get this molecule, which is called a chromatid. Okay, so essentially what a chromatid is, it's where you take one DNA molecule and you condense it into a very organized structure called a chromatid. Okay, and what we're going to see is that actually when we look back at the S phase, remember we actually replicated the DNA. We replicated the DNA. So I didn't just start off with one of these DNA molecules. There was also a pair. There was a pair of them, right? So I have one uh, piece of the chromatin. I condense it, and I'm going to get another one of these. I'm going to get another one of these, right? So here's the second one, okay? So this is, this is another chromatid, okay? So keep in mind that in human cells, before you replicate the DNA, you have 23 DNA molecules. There's 23 DNA molecules. And so if I replicate the DNA, now in total, there would be 46, 46 DNA molecules. Okay? So that's just something to bear in mind. We're going to come back to that. Um, so just keep in mind, before we replicate the DNA, we have 23 DNA molecules. Now we have 46. Okay. So let's talk about prophase, the first phase of mitosis. What's going to happen in prophase is the chromatin, this stuff right here, this is the chromatin, it's going to condense into a chromatid. Okay, and these things right here that I that I kind of did in a bold uh, lines, these are the chromatids. Okay, since I replicated the DNA, okay, when I replicated it. For every DNA molecule that I started with before the S phase, now I have a, another one to go with it to create a pair. And so each one of these chromatids is therefore called one of the sister chromatids. Okay, So these are sister chromatids. Now, there's a certain part of each chromatid. Okay, So maybe, maybe for example, maybe this is... This, these, these two represent, let's say maybe they represent chromosome number four. I don't know. Well, there's a, there's a component of chromosome number four. Maybe it's right here. Maybe it's right here where they're going to, these two chromatids are going to become connected. Okay, so basically right here, let me do it in red, there's going to be a junction right here between these two chromatids. Okay, so if you look at this molecule right here, this is actually a chromosome that consists of two chromatids. So this is, you can kind of see it right there. This is chromatid number one, and this is chromatid number two. It's sister. So these two right here, these are 
sister chromatids, and they become joined in sort of an X shape at this structure called the centromere. So the centromere is where two sister chromatids join, okay? And there's some other proteins that assemble there. So if you just keep that in mind, that in prophase, the chromatin condenses into a chromatid, and they become, uh, they become joined at a structure called the centromere. Okay? That's what's happening on a DNA level. Okay? There's some other stuff that happens. Um, number one, you have these centrosomes. Okay? So this right here... You can't really see it very well because it's not really that big. But this right here, this is called a centrosome. And there's two of them. Okay. In fact, if you blow it up, they sort of look like this. And the job of the centrosome is to synthesize microtubules. These specific microtubules you'll call spindle fibers. These are called spindle fibers. Okay. The spindle fibers are going to be important for binding the chromosome. Okay. And the thing that facilitates their growth is called a microtubule organizing center. Okay? Um, the centrosomes will start migrating towards the pole of the cell. Okay, so this centrosome might start migrating this direction. This one might start migrating that direction. Okay, so the whole point of prophase is you start to get the centrosomes migrating towards the poles of the cell. The chromatin has condensed into chromatids, and both chromatids join at the centromere. And then also inside the nucleus, the nucleolus dissolves. The nucleolus dissolves. Okay, So the nucleolus is going to disappear, so we won't be able to synthesize ribosomal RNA um, in the future. That's why it was important in the growth phases to get that out of the way. So that's prophase. Now, in some older textbooks, they'll go straight from prophase to metaphase. They'll kind of neglect this step. Um, this step is actually really important to understand. Okay, If I go back to this slide right here, I, I sort of circled this centromere in red right here, kind of bolded it in. Okay, The spindle fibers that I just talked about, these microtubules that are synthesized by the centrioles, okay? Essentially, those spindle fibers, they're going to, you know, let's say this is a centrosome. Let's say that's a centrosome, right? And it's going to synthesize a spindle fiber. And the spindle fiber is going to attach to this centrosome. And there's a structure there that's going to attach to. But basically, you know, I'll have, I'll have another chromosome right here eventually. You know, there's a centromere right here. The centrioles will attach another spindle fiber to this this centrosome. And so you can imagine that all of the chromosomes that you have that are conglomerates of two sister chromatids, they're going to be attached to these spindle fibers that are synthesized by the centrioles. Okay? What you have to imagine in prometaphase is that these spindle fibers, they attach to the chromosomes. Okay? So they invade the nuclear space and attach to the chromosomes. Okay, so the spindle fibers are being synthesized continuously by the centrosomes, and you're polymerizing tubulin subunits. Tubulin is the protein that makes up the spindle fiber, so you polymerize it, and the spindle fibers are getting longer and longer and longer, and then they attach to the centromere. And the part of the centromere they attach to, this is important, the tips of the spindle fibers attach to structure, structures within the centromere known as kinetochores. Let me circle kinetochore. Kinetochore is a protein component of the centromere to which the spindle fibers attach. Okay, So we'll look at a picture on the next slide and you'll kind of see what it looks like. So also the other thing in prometaphase that happens is the nuclear membrane breaks down. And hopefully you can kind of see it here. Notice this, this, this region right here. You can see the fragments of the nuclear membrane. So the nuclear membrane starts to dissolve at the end of prophase. But during prometaphase, this is when the nuclear membrane starts to really break down. And also notice that the, the uh, centrosomes right here, the centrioles, they've started to migrate towards the poles a little bit further. And by metaphase, they'll be all the, all the way there. Okay, so this, this picture right here is pretty good. Uh, here's, the, here's the chromosome. This is the, this is the chromosome. The whole thing is called a chromosome. Each one of these guys right here, each one is called a chromatid. The chromatid is just one DNA molecule. And the kinetochore, which I'll, let me highlight it in red. This right here, this protein component right here, this is called the kinetochore. 
And then this right here, this is the microtubule that attaches to the kinetochore. Okay, so the microtubules extend from the centrioles. Imagine the centrioles kind of over here, right? And it extends spindle fibers over and to that to attach to the kinetochore, which is attached to the to the chromosome. So that's how the microtubules attach to the chromosome. They attach specifically to the kinetochores, which are part of the centromere. Okay. By the time you get to metaphase, these uh, these centrosomes. Are at the poles, okay? And you have to imagine from prometaphase, you know, the spindle fibers have already attached to the chromosomes. So at metaphase, what you should see is all of these chromosomes in humans, there will be 23 chromosomes, okay? All of these are essentially at what we call the metaphase plate or the metaphase equator. And the metaphase equator is essentially an imaginary. Um, uh, an imaginary circle that kind of goes around the cell and essentially on this plane okay all the chromosomes are lined up so hopefully you see you see all these spindle fibers right you see the spindle fibers and you see how the chromosomes are essentially attached to the spindle fibers and they're attached not only on one side but they're also attached on the other side from the other centriole okay so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense Okay, and the key is that both the centri centrosomes are on opposite poles of the cell, and they're all and the spindle fibers they're producing attach to the chromosomes on either side. So maybe this particular centrosome, this is the one on the north side of the cell, and then over here you're going to have another centrosome, right? And this is on the south side of the cell. So let me do this one in a different color. This is another. This is another spindle fiber that once again is going to attach to the kinetochore of the centromere, but it's on the other side. So you basically have this, this chromosome, which is going to be attached to spindle fibers or microtubules that come from uh, centrosomes on either side of the cell. Now, imagine what's going to happen in the following step. What's essentially going to happen is these microtubules are going to start shortening. Okay. So you have to imagine these microtubules, they're attached very strongly to the kinetochores. Okay? But see, this, this sort of junction right here between the chromatids isn't very strong. Okay? So when these, when these microtubules start to shorten, you can imagine that this little, this kind of junction between the chromatids, it's going to break. Right? So this chromatid is going to be pulled this direction when the microtubules start shortening. And when this microtubule start shortening, then these chromatids are going to be pulled towards the left, towards the south pole. And that's actually the process of anaphase, which we'll look at in just a second. Okay. Here's kind of a, a kind of a, a neat structure that kind of shows you how the um, how the microtubule attaches to the kinetochore. You can see that this right here, this is the actual chromatid. This is the chromatid right here. Of course, it's grossly abbreviated, just kind of showing you the general structure. And then attached to it, you have the you have the kinetochore and all this business. So the kinetochore is basically a protein that attaches to this component right here. What is this? This is the centromere. This is the centromere of the DNA molecule. And the kinetochore attaches here. And on one side, the kinetochore attaches to the centromere of the chromatid. On the other side, you have the microtubule. And so the microtubule is indirectly attached to the chromatid. And like I said from the metaphase step, you have these chromosomes that are lined up on the equator. But during anaphase, what's essentially going to happen is, remember, those microtubules are very strongly attached to the kinetochore. Okay, so what happens is, is when the microtubules start shortening, the chromatids are pulled apart. And so you can see that here in this step. Notice that this chromatid got pulled apart. So this chromatid got pulled apart. And so now what's happening is as these microtubules shorten, right, those microtubules are shortening, they're pulling the chromatids apart, okay? 
And what you'll also see is notice how in metaphase the cell was somewhat circular, or we could say spherical. Now the, the in two dimensions this kind of looks elliptical. So the cell is actually starting to elongate in preparation for the actual division. But the idea is that through the use of these centrosomes and the shortening of the microtubules, you pull the chromatids apart and the chromosome actually comes apart. Okay? And as the microtubules get shorter and shorter, the chromatids migrate farther and farther towards the poles of the cell. And that's basically the process of anaphase. Chromosomes break at the centromeres and sister chromatids move to opposite ends or poles of the cell, and it's mediated by microtubule shortening. Okay? The last two phases are kind of usually done um, together. Um, in telophase, the nuclear membrane reforms. So think back to this phase, prometaphase, when the nuclear membrane started to dissipate and eventually um, completely fell apart, and it's gone. Well, in telophase, the nuclear membrane reforms. Okay, so that DNA that we just replicated, we basically went from all of the chromosomes lined up on the equator, we now pull them apart in anaphase, and now we're going to repackage that DNA into a nucleus. So the nuclear membrane reforms. And within the nucleus, the chromosomes unwind into highly dispersed chromatin. So we're going from the very, very, very organized chromosome into a less organized chromatin. Even though it's still organized, we don't have this unique structure. So basically, the chromatid would look something like this. right? It's very rigid it's forced into this conformation, but when we unwind the chromosome, it goes back into this form, the chromatin, right? Okay. Also, the nucleolus reappears in telophase, so now we can begin ribosomal RNA biosynthesis. Okay. Now, approximately the time between telophase and cytokinesis is when we start forming this contractile ring. Okay, so this is the contractile ring. Essentially what's happening is the following. Basically you're starting out with two cells kind of like this, right? They're kind of coming apart, right? Here's the nucleus of each one. And you go through a step and now it's starting to contract a little bit more, right? The cells are start the cell contractile rings contracting and you're starting to pull them apart. And then maybe you get to a situation like this where they're really starting to come apart. And then at the end of the contraction, they completely come apart and you end up with two new cells. Okay, So the idea is you use proteins, referred to as myosin and actin, to make something called a contractile ring. And the contractile ring contracts and forces these cells to split. Okay, And the split site, a piece of terminology, is known as the cleavage furrow. Okay, and it contains the myosin and actin mediated contractile ring. So telophase, what it's really responsible for is regenerating a lot of the cellular machinery, like the nucleus and the chromosomes and the chromatin form and the nucleolus. Okay, and cytokinesis is all about the cells actually splitting apart. Okay, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. And that basically is the process of mitosis. Once you have the two new cells, they go back to interphase. They're in interphase. So they'll be free to either be at rest, they'll be free to be at rest, or they'll go through another cell cycle where you replicate the DNA and then go through another mitosis. So they're free to do all sorts of stuff. Some cells are mitotically active in which they'll keep doing the cell cycle through mitosis. Others will just stay at rest. So hopefully that made a little bit of sense. In the next video, we're going to do a very short um, introduction to apoptosis. See you in the next video.